Antisocial behaviour makes headline news, but it's a difficult subject to get to grips with in the classroom. So just how do you engage students and make it meaningful? At Caldew School in Cumbria, David Coulson Lowes has developed a lesson plan around antisocial behaviour and the respect agenda. Full details of this lesson are available on the Teachers TV website. Before I start the process of planning, I always start with what I consider to be good teaching practice, which is where are the pupils at? Where are they in terms of their knowledge, in terms of the, their emotional understanding of a subject? Uh, I'd look for a relevant case study. And what I, what I hope I can do is, is take it from being something quite local. There was a, a perception in Cumbria that um, antisocial behaviour was, was becoming out of control in certain areas or at certain times. Uh, and there, there were a very vocal group of people who said that something should be done about it. Have a look at this sheet. It's a little journey with little boxes in for you to make a record of your journey. David starts with a lesson objectives before encouraging the students to consider their own ideas of antisocial behaviour. Sorry, Anne. Top left hand side. Give some examples of what you think antisocial behaviour is. We're making a record right at the beginning of the lesson as to what you think this is. We're going to have a look at the end of the lesson and see if you still agree with yourself. See if you've changed your mind or your opinions at all. So what really is antisocial behaviour? Experts in the field explain. Antisocial behaviour, the legal definition, is any behaviour that causes harassment, alarm or distress, or is likely to. In reality, what that means is that it uh, can be behaviour such as graffiti, uh, shouting, swearing, uh, vandalism, uh, criminal damage, uh, threats, and actual violence. So it's quite broad ranging in what it can cover, but the legal definition is harassment, alarm or distress. However, to a degree it's quite subjective. What may cause distress to one person doesn't necessarily cause distress to another. Um, behaviour in one context may not necessarily be antisocial behaviour, uh, whereas in another context it may be. So for instance, if you live in an urban environment, playing your music very loudly till three or four o'clock in the morning is likely to cause harassment, alarm and distress. But if you live in the country with nobody else nearby to you, then obviously you can play your music without it bothering or disturbing anybody else. Do you think one of them is antisocial? Do you think two of them? Do you think all of them? Anybody got any suggestions, any thoughts? Go on, Kim, what do you reckon? You, you think either graffiti, yeah. that's, that's antisocial, definitely. W why do you think it's antisocial? Because it's damaging somebody's it's property. It's damaging property. Some people say it's art, though. Is that not art? No. It's, just... it's damaging somebody's property. It looks a mess. Well, fair enough. Okay. Anybody got any other? There's one. What about the rest of them? And the top middle one. Top middle, this one here? Yeah. Why is that antisocial? It could be causing trouble or it could be uh, just messing around. They could be causing trouble, yeah. Are these people, by what they're dressed in, where they are, the time of day it is, is that antisocial? Just stereotyping. Mm, we've got to be careful, haven't we? We've got to be careful that we don't stereotype. The great myth is that all young people cause antisocial behaviour. The majority of the work that we do is not with young people. We have a range from, at the moment, for instance, we're investigating an 80-year-old and her 75-year-old husband we have a large amount of middle-aged women who have alcohol problems. We have a large range of men, particularly in their early 20s, who have alcohol and drug-related problems. But we also do have a lot of young people as well. I think there are many causes of antisocial behaviour, such as uh, from a deprived background, low expectation of life, lack of confidence in themselves as individuals, getting drunk a lot, uh, taking drugs, so substance misuse and being dependent on drugs. I think there are other issues around being with a group of other people who are involved in behaviour uh, and therefore the individual also gets involved in the behaviour. Criminal behaviour is always antisocial. If somebody commits a crime, this, this, this little quote here is saying that that, that is antisocial. Do you agree with that? Could you give me any examples, perhaps? Just because you're a criminal doesn't mean it's antisocial. Like, antisocial could be 
like graffitiing, but just because say uh, like you murdered someone doesn't mean you're gonna go and graffiti. So do you think murdering somebody isn't antisocial? Because it would ruin somebody's social life, wouldn't it? Yeah. In one sentence, could you tell me what antisocial behaviour is? Go on. Disturbing people of the public. Disturbing the public? Yeah. Anybody want to add to that? Causing offence to anybody anywhere. Causing offence to anybody anywhere? It's a fair one. Making a nuisance of yourself. Making a nuisance of yourself? This is how the law defines it. Acting in an antisocial manner as a manner that caused or is likely to cause harassment, alarm or distress to one or more persons not of the same household as the complainant. What usually happens is if you commit a crime or an offence, you're charged with that offence. And you have the opportunity to stand up in a court of law and defend yourself. Usually though, you've actually done something. The difference here though, is that if somebody thinks you are likely to do something, you can perhaps fall foul of the law. Now that's, that's dangerous ground potentially, isn't it? Yeah? Oh, he's looking a bit suspicious over there. He's wearing a hoodie, must be bad, oh dear. And you could intentionally get stereotyped, as Kim was mentioning earlier on. So we've got to be careful here, okay? There's something called the respect agenda. Has anybody ever heard of it? Anybody? What, what does respect mean to you? What are you selling in people's shoes? Putting yourself in other people's shoes. Thinking of them before yourself. Thinking of them before yourself. That's an interesting one. Anybody got any other thoughts? What about on the screen? Have a look at what's on here. Are there any parts of that that you disagree with? Or is there any one thing on there that you think, yeah, that's it? Everybody's part of everyone else. The students discuss the values inherent in the respect agenda by selecting statements that most represent their views. No, I don't like that one. <laughs> yeah. It's about showing tolerance, acceptance and common decency towards people who have family, friends and peers. <laughs> being able to be the way I am without being bullied or skittied. We're just doing them in order. Do you have to do them in separate columns? No, or? I was just asking you to separate them out. So on one side, you think, yeah, that's definitely what the respect agenda is about. Oh, and on the other side, you think, no, actually, that doesn't fit. Well, show respect to people how you want to be treated because you don't want to be. If someone messes you about, you're going to be nice with them because yeah. you wouldn't like it to be done with you. The person said that, where do you think they'd heard it from originally? Older people, because that's what my, my mom always says to me. Do you know where she got it from? Probably her mom. Ultimately, it comes, it comes from the Bible, isn't it? Do unto others as you have done unto yourself. It's actually found its way into our common understanding of what respect is. Do you think that one? that covers everything, really. It covers everything? Yeah, because it's about religions, other people, family and friends, people yeah. who are older than you, people who are younger than you, which is everybody. Everybody. Respect agenda. I, I took this actually from the document. All right, and if you notice there, it's actually in two different formats. There are three bullet points at the top. The top three come from Downing Street. Tony Blair took a specific interest in this. He thought that young people, in particular, yeah, needed to be taught about what respect is. Respect cannot, in the end, be conjured simply through legislation. Government can provide resources and powers. It can do its best to ensure that wrongdoing is detected, that its powers against offenders are suitable, that the systems are expeditious and its enforcement strong. Him and his civil servants set about writing those top three. What about the bottom ones? Where have they come from? Actually came from young people. And those were the things that they came out with. In other words, they're being put into to pupil language. In terms of being able to communicate with young people, I, I, I do feel we, we, we get document after document from the government based upon very sound and valid research, but it's in a language that's, that's alien to me as a teacher, let alone to a young person. And that's why if you looked at the lesson objectives there, I try my best to remove complicated vocabulary. Not that I don't value literacy, it's crucial, but there's no way they'll be able to even take a step towards gaining it if we don't break it down into simplified language. And that is a big issue that when I speak with teachers or even coordinators of citizenship, they find it difficult to take national curriculum speak and actually put it into a language that young people can use. How, how can we deal with that social behaviour? Like more police going out on the streets. More police being out on the streets? Do, doing more things about it? Encouraging children to take part in sports or other activities rather than uh, just letting them hang around on the streets. 
other options. I always get that. More youth, yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting point. Isn't it? A lot of people say, we need to do more for young people. That's a fair point, yeah. Because I ask young people, you know, what are you doing on night? They say, oh, we're, we're bored. How else can we deal with them? As well. What are those? Anti-social behaviour order. Anti order. An anti-social behaviour order is literally a piece of paper that is issued from the court. Within the anti-social behaviour order, we can put conditions about what people are prohibited from doing. So we can prohibit people from going to places, being with people and being out at certain times. And these prohibitions, they must relate to the incident and uh, they must be specific and they must be understood by the individual and probably more importantly for the community they must be sort of measurable or monitored in some way so a uh, kind of condition like uh, you must not commit any anti-social behaviour act is a fairly woolly thing it's not a good condition as an alternative you mustn't go with your best friend into the high street into Wimpy's or into McDonald's it's a fairly specific Prohibition. David has created an information board detailing aspects of the legislation as well as behaviour that is generally considered antisocial and various examples of ASBOs that have been served. Quick five minutes, have a look. What's an ASBO? The board allows students to compare their understanding of justice with the way ASBOs have been used. Following these comparisons, David goes on to address how ASBOs might possibly relate to the respect to gender. Do you think that ASBOs match this respect to gender? Do the two meet together? Are ASBOs trying to encourage people to do the things that the respect to gender is talking about? Yes, no. No? Yes, no? Giving you the chance to stop doing antisocial behaviour and you start learning to respect other people and other people's property. How long does an ASBO last for? Two years, minimum of two years. It can be more than that, yeah. Do you think ASBOs are a good idea? Will they reduce crime and help people who suffer from antisocial behaviour? Are they fair to the people who get them? Your opinions, your thoughts. We often see in the press the argument that by imposing an antisocial behaviour order on somebody, you are in effect criminalising behaviour that would normally be considered fully acceptable. The nature of the behaviour determines the type of terms in an order that we obtain. We need to refine each order to meet the needs of that individual person. The breaching of the order itself is a criminal act, but the young person has a choice to make, and if they don't breach the terms of the order, then they will not be criminalised. If they do breach the terms of the order, then yes, unfortunately, they will become possibly further involved in the criminal justice system than they were before that. My biggest concern is that people become desocialised. If you have a criminal record that you don't feel you have a role or a part to play in the community around you and therefore you become isolated and you almost step into a criminal path, not through choice but through circumstance. Um, if we just quickly look back then, do you know more now than you did before you came in the room? Yeah, you're better informed, you're able to make, yeah, use the information to make good decisions. Yeah.